surprise today I got a message from a good friend of mine Yitzhak Shapira that he was coming to the area to show me something very very special and that I needed to invite all my friends and he Yitzhak Shapira and his friend Eldad Kayanan are going to show us something that we've never seen before so I, I realized okay I need to call up the guys we need to go check this out and I hope you enjoy our day of exploration here right here from the Galilee There is a concept here that is so important, especially for us uh, as Messianic believers. In the book of John, he's talking about, Yeshua said, you will be able to do greater things than me. Greater things to me. And it's called in Judaism, hit kashrut la tzaddik. Connection to the, to, 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 to the tzaddik. Remember when Moshe Rabbeinu went out, he took the bones of Joseph. Every miracle according to Jewish tradition was done because he had the bones of Joseph. So this concept here of hit kashrut, you are cleaving yourself to the tzaddik. Eldad went to uh, Haifa University, studied history, and he devoted really most of his adult uh, a life to investigate tombs and caves. More underground. Underground, yes. But in the midst of all of this thing, he became an investigator, I think, of all of Messianic Judaism. Yeah. And what you are going to see today oh, is, is, we call it footsteps of ancient Messianic Judaism. We are going today to try to put a puzzle with you so this is, a, a, as they say in Hebrew, kamtsuts, a drop in the bucket of the things that you see in the Galil and the Golan. And nobody knows those things because there is no gift shop. There is no, <laughs> no, no, a, restaurant. no, no aroma. <laughs> and you can kind of get dirty and you may even fight dead goats on the way <laughs> but <laughs> fight dead goats yeah fight dead goats you might yeah maybe <laughs> maybe not today Chavarim, we are about 300 meters away from uh, the burial tomb of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and this area as you see the rockiness it's filled with caves now we're about to learn about amazing discovery that we discovered it's hidden no Messianic Jew know about this. Uh, Haredim know about it, the Orthodox know. And they actually tried to destroy it over the years. And it used to be much more obvious, but you will see in a minute, uh, that Messianic Jews were here. And we're gonna learn something pretty amazing about them too. So let's go up there and let's take a look. We're going to talk about smalim, right? We're going yeah. to talk symbols. symbols. What is the most... Think about symbols for a second. When you think about symbols, why, why would anybody have symbols? What do you think about Jewish symbols? What do we think about? Magen yeah, David. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. You'll be surprised to find out Magen David is very young. Is very mm. young. It's not the original uh, Jewish symbol. Yeah. Why would somebody want to leave a symbol? Why? To say, I am this and I am here. Exactly. The reason that there is a symbol is to make a statement about who I am. And by the way, in an illiterate world, as Jesus, ah. as Yeshua's world was, symbols are the way to connect, that people can connect when they can't read and write. Like today we have emojis. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the, the other thing, 
that is important is when we talk about cost uh, of a symbol. So if the Magen David is not uh, a Jewish symbol, what do you think is another very Jewish symbol? Menorah. Menorah. Exactly. Menorah is a Jewish symbol. Yeah. A classic Jewish tomb because it has a place to store bones. So yeah. how do you bury today in Judaism? Let's ask. What do you do today? Yeah, trench grave. Put them into immediately. A, uh, you put them in the simple uh, trench grave. Yes. Yeah. Hours underground. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now let's go back two thousand years later. Yeah. And God, give a very thorough explanation. First of all, what are the skates and okay. how, how things were looking? Well, if you go to the times of Yeshua, poor Jews could bury their their dead in normal trench graves like today. But if a Jew is rich enough to buy a plot of ground and to pay for the building of a tomb, this is what he does, and the tomb becomes the family tomb. We'd, we would expect only family members to be buried in a tomb. The uh, structure of the, these tombs was dictated by the severity of corpse defilement in Judaism, and the tombs meant to confine the defilement as much as possible. This is why in normal classic Jewish tombs, the niches are not like this, but cut into the rock for almost two meters long. And it was very hard to, to, to cut it, but this is what Jews did, because the opening of these niches, not these, that the other niches, that the uh, perpendicular niches were small enough to be blocked easily. This mean, meant to block the confinement. And of course, to block uh, scavenging animals or so. <clears throat> but as you can see, here we have the arch. The arch is not easy to block. You notice that, guys, kind of the angle, the way that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And another uh, component of classic Jewish tombs is that the niches are at the same level with the floor. But as you can see here, these burials are about more than half a meter higher than the floor. Mm -hmm. And this is not classic Jewish. So, when we have the arch, ah, the arches were introduced into Jewish burial custom and practice in mid first century. This is not what I say, this is what Professor Kloner said, the late Professor Kloner. So, if uh, religious concepts dictated the structure of the classic Jewish tomb, there must have been a significant change in religious concept to allow for this. The question you need to ask yourself, let me say it in a simple way, there has been a change in architecture of tombs, yeah. of tombs in the middle of the first century. This is something we all agreed upon. Yeah. The question you need to ask yourself, you're in a burial tomb right now, why would we have a change in architecture? And the time. And the time. And more importantly, what it symbolizes. If there is a change, what dictates this change? What? Somebody woke up one morning and said, I'm no, changing? No way. There is something deeper. Yeah. Okay. A radical religious change. And we know of only one radical religious change in mid first century. Which is what? <laughs> Yeshua. Yeshua, Yeshua coming. Yes. This change took place roughly 20, 15, 10, 15 years after after Yeshua. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeshua died. Something something uh -huh. took place. So just like the tomb in Meron with the the structure was sort of Jewish, but the symbol was Christian. When you put them together, you have Christian Jewish, which means Messianic Jewish. Just the same here, but the other way around. The structure is Christian and the symbol is Jewish. So what would cause it to flip that one time it's Jewish, the, the you know, structure Jewish and, and symbol Christians, and sometimes, sometimes the, the factor is time. It's time. This is later. M much later. <coughs> I don't know much, but it's later. Uh, Which telling us what? Hey, I am a Christian now, but I know where I'm coming from. I know from. my roots. Mm -hmm. I know my roots. I I'm still a this, Jew. I, I believe this tomb belonged to uh, Messianic Jews 
toward the end of the road to become complete Christians. Wow, okay. Because there is no mikveh around, mm -hmm. no remains of synagogue, nothing is Jewish around, and no classic Jewish tombs around. So these people could be almost cr completely Christians, but still with some good connections to Judaism. much more connected than I was before. Here we were, uh, there we were in an ancient uh, tomb, 2,000 years old, seeing the menorah, the menorah uh, on a Jewish believer's grave site. And I could see how people get confused throughout the, the ages um, with Messianic Judaism and Judaism. You know, really, Messianic Judaism is the oldest form of Judaism today. Our rabbi, came right here from the Galilee. He's right from here. Uh, everything he did was Jewish. He preached in all of the synagogues. It says this in the New Testament, the Brit Chadasha. He preached in all of the synagogues in this area. So here we go to this, this Christian tomb, some would call it, and then realize it's actually a Jewish tomb. And also my mind was kind of blown. I must admit at first I was kind of like a little hesitant, uh, you know. I see the bone box, I see how the grave is a little more, as, as Eldad explained, it was more Christian in design and no Jewish people designed it that way. But then you had the bone box which was only a Jewish thing in an only Jewish village where there was only one synagogue, not an ancient church. So for me in the end, I'm still kind of taking it all in, but in the end, what, how I feel in the end was just a reminder that it's still Jewish. My Christian brothers and sisters, those of you who are watching, um, you know, we're brothers and sisters and the root goes back. It didn't start 2,000 years ago. Yeshua came, the great rabbi Yeshua came uh, to fulfill that which had already been foretold. And you see the early believers right here in Israel, first century, uh, right up until, as we, as we explored up until the third, fourth century here in Israel, still were ma maintaining a Jewish culture, a Jewish lifestyle. And um, it was just a reminder to me that, you know, we've had 16, 1500 years of history uh, of Christianity, which is quite beautiful on, on one perspective, because I have so many Christians who've come to this understanding that we're brothers and sisters. You know, the first century used to be, uh, what in the world are we gonna do with these Gentiles who believe? It was, the, it was the big debate among all the, all the disciples and all the apostles. What do you do with these Gentiles that believe? And today, 2,000 years later, I see people that are confused with me, confused with my friends 
who are still Jewish and believe in the Messiah. And our Christian friends are saying, what are we going to do with these Jews who believe in Jesus? And uh, it's just flipped. So today I, I find myself just being reminded that it's okay uh, to believe in Yeshua because you can still be Jewish. As a matter of fact, I think it's the oldest form of Judaism today because we go back to a rabbi. Not rabbis that are buried in Tiberias. They'll go back hundreds of years. It goes back 2,000 years to a rabbi who was buried and not buried anymore because he is risen just as the prophets had foretold. You know, he's alive and well. And our rabbi um, is the one we serve, we follow. And his words are, are the ultimate for us to follow that, re that lead us to the Father. In the end, I'm so thankful for Rabbi Yitzchak Shapira, for our wonderful guide and historian and really archaeologist, Eldad Kenan, for opening our eyes as brothers here in the Galilee, just to be reminded what we're a part of, because the king who once was here and transformed this whole area uh, by his words uh, is coming back again. And we say, as we say here, Bo, Bo Yeshua, come Yeshua. And that's really why we're here to welcome the king back. He's coming back again. He came back, he came here to fulfill what the prophets had said, and he's coming back again. Hallelujah. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. If you'd like to subscribe to our channel, click the subscribe button over here. If you'd like to watch more videos, click these buttons over here. God bless you from the Sea of Galilee.